That's Citizen K and True Companions. Klaus Kvist is calling in from Sweden, and uh, this is uh, this is a thirteen cut CD. It's yep. uh, it's on uh, pa- Paraply Records. Yep. And it uh, it came out it's in the, Sweden. The, the Swedish word for umbrella. Oh, I see. Okay, so it came out last year. In Sweden, but this is uh, this is your first radio appearance in the United States, and I'm I'm really honored that it is that we're hopefully making this not, happen. Not my last. And you not have it well, time. hopefully not, Neil. No. And then also you had a record out before this, which I really really like, and uh, it's called uh, Second Thoughts. It's a two CD set, also yeah. on Paraply Records, and uh, maybe I'll get to one of those a- after I'm finished showcasing your record. I'll play one of those uh, just for just to give people an idea of what you were doing a, a year ago. And uh, so, uh, you know, I, I noticed that the uh, that you recorded most of this yourself, self-produced, and doing all the instruments except for drums and a little and some horns and some horns uh, in post-production. Uh, yep, exactly. We, post post-production was was a friend of mine in 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 just north of Stockholm. Yes, named G- Gudmund de Bragason. So a shout out to him. And. Um, you know, I'm just curious. I think I'm forgetting the name of the movie now. I just saw a movie. It takes place in Sweden. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a horror movie. And right. God, if I can remember the name of it, I just saw it a month ago. From when? Uh, oh, uh, it's called uh, Summer Something Summer. Oh, God. It's it's a Swedish word for, for like uh, the endless summer when it's light out really late. Midsummer, midsummer. Midsummer, that's it. Mm-hmm. Did you like it? I don't know. I don't know about that one. Well, it, it it yes, it came out. Uh, it came it came out here, and it was really disturbing, but also really well right. done. But in yeah. terms in terms of other Swedish uh, cultural things, music wise, I, I did mm-hmm. notice that there's a little bit of a electric light orchestra vocal. Influence at least it seems that way to me in that last song. Yeah. Would I would I would I be correct? Oh yeah, I mean I I I love the Electric Light Orchestra. I'm 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 a huge fan, ELO fan, and a huge fan of the Move. Ten CC and oh, are you kidding? I mean they 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 are my favorites. I mean Ten CC alongside uh, the Beatles and and um, of course the Beatles. I mean they they uh, how can you not like the Beatles? Other, you know, I know a lot of people who not only do not like them, they don't even know who they are because they're much younger. And, uh, you know, I knew this would happen eventually, that people, yeah. uh, w- you would talk, be talking to somebody and saying, yeah, you know, that's just like the Beatles song, blah, blah, blah. And they go, who's that? <laughs> yeah. But I, think, I think that movie that came out now. Oh, right, uh, right, right. The, uh, it's, um, yeah, it's with, about the it's English film. Uh, yeah, about, it is. 
about the uh, Indian uh, gentleman who who gets knocked out and then he starts playing Beatles songs and nobody's ever heard of them. No, nobody's <laughs> ever heard them. I think that one will will uh, will do the trick and also the uh, like the fiftieth anniversary of stuff. You know, the the Abbey Road uh, anniversary coming up and and also the uh, Let It Be anniversary coming up the next year. Next year. Yeah, I think I've, uh, I've heard some tracks from the Abbey Road. At, um, you know the remastered tracks. How many mm-hmm. times will they remaster them? That's that's what I want to know. I don't know, but I like the original. Uh, the originals, uh, the best actually. The way they sounded when they came out in '69. That's that's how I like it because yeah, I would it. agree. I would agree. Uh, although I have to say that uh, that uh, what's his name, Giles Martin. Uh, yeah, he's really got a great ear, and he's done a great job at these reissues of his yeah. father's work. Uh, but I yeah. do, I do remember. And uh, cherish and treasure the original mixes of all the Beatles albums, especially yeah. the the really early ones with the in in here in the United States or on Capitol. The stereo mm-hmm. recordings were very unique, where they had the vocals on one side and the guitars and what have you on the other side. Yeah. Very. I think that, I think they actually had those mixes all over the place, like like in England also. But they but they the, the mixes differed. In England and in the U.S. in the 60s, it's sort of two separate um, uh, ball games. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I don't know why they did so many different mixes, but uh, but it's nice hearing no. the original one. And now the albums came out differently in the U.S. too. They were sort of a different discography. Uh, yeah, different all, all order the way through up up until Sgt. Pepper. I guess there was there was different albums and different running orders of tracks and stuff and. But I prefer the uh, mono box set that came out in 2009 uh, with all the UK albums from the start up until the White Album. Oh, that's, that's, okay. That's the way I prefer it, actually. And uh, when you were younger, did you listen to... Uh, what was your f- first memories of listening to music? W- was it... I mean, you, oh. you were born in 66, so... Yeah. I wouldn't think you'd be listening to the Beatles when you're one year old. You'd probably be... No, you know. but, it, but it, happened, it happened quite early, actually, because I, I received a copy of Hey Jude when I was five or six, uh, a single uh, that had Re- Revolution on the B-side. And I liked... Actually, then I liked that track, track better because it made a lot more noise. But as time went on, I, I learned to appreciate Hey Jude a whole lot better actually yes they traded places with each other so what so what came early along with the other ones along with the glam rock uh, like the sweet and slade and the sparks and and all the others that went on in the 70s that i that i picked up are you from a smaller community in sweden or a, or a, a city uh i wouldn't say city but it's a town that is Sort of becoming a, a, a city almost because it's you know they're building stuff for all all the time and they are you know it's 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 getting narrow here. <laughs> what where where are you located? What's the name of the place? Borås. It's actually B O R A with with one dot S. But you almost pronounce it as if it was was a French word with A U or something like Borås. What do, what do you do in Boros for uh, entertainment? Do you go out and hear live music? Do you play live music? Uh, I used to. I don't play that much live at the moment, but I'm hoping to do that in the future again. But now it's sort of... I mean, you're catching me in, in a sort of a mid-period um, when, I'm, when I'm mostly composing and... and uh, recording. Trying to recording, yes. Well, it's it's great when you can do all that under one roof, and you're obviously very very good at it. So I'm oh, gonna thank you. I'm <laughs> thanks gonna a lot. Go to this next track. This is how are mm-hmm. you gonna handle it? Is this about anything in particular? This this uh, this song? Uh, it's about being somewhere between dream and uh, you know, like dreaming waking state when you you can't actually move because that is something that happens to me. Sometimes it happened. It happened to me the other night again. Actually, you, you, you can't move a muscle, and you you think I always almost presume that I'm uh, suffering from locked-in syndrome or something. That's oh. what the song is all about. Oh, okay. 
Well, and there's a lot of stuff going on on on, on the inside, a lot of, lots of frightening stuff, and you, you, you can't move and you can't... You can't scream. It's just. Ah. Well, you know, I, I I experience a very similar thing when I'm sleeping. If I'm if I'm too warm, I mm-hmm. I have a dream about being too warm and being stuck in some place. Yeah. And as soon as I figure out how to get out of that place, that's when I push the covers off or whatever. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I often wake up at that point. Uh, but yeah. that you know the dream state of feeling like you're stuck somewhere that lasts for a millisecond when it seems like yeah. it goes on forever but it oh actually... it's, it's, it goes on for an, uh, an eternity almost, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, your, your sense of time is totally messed up it is so yeah. this is citizen k how are you going to handle it here on the rock it's tuesday lunch No one. 